This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. Hello, college football fans, and welcome to the Primetime Podcast. My name is Ricky Widmer, and as always, because I'm joined in studio with him this week, I'm joined by the one, the only, Brandon Swanee Swanson. Hey, hey, hey. And uh, Brandon, you're not driving home from... Your house this week. I actually got you in studio. It, it's nice having you in studio where it's nice and warm and we got the lights off. It's it's nice being in studio with you, Ricky. You know, it's just a different dynamic, you know, when I'm driving from home in my car. Trying to focus on traffic. With Yeah, with the rain pelting down on the windshield. It's just different. Well, don't worry. We, we heard the rain. And before we get into our podcast, which is always jam-packed as usual... I kind of was thinking something coming into this podcast, and part of me was like, you know what? I wish, I wish that we were a talk show, like radio show today, because I have a special, I had a special idea, and if we were a talk show on like the radio, it'd be easy. We have the listeners call in, this segment works perfectly, but we're going to do it in the comments section, because Brandon, I, I heard some breaking news today. Did you? That apparently Garrett Cole of the Pittsburgh Pirates does not believe that Nick Saban is the best football coach in college football or that Alabama is even the best team in college football because apparently Garrett Cole doesn't believe things that are the best really are. Yeah, you know, Garrett Cole, I think that things like that when when people try and talk like, oh, yeah, Alabama's not that good or oh, the Cubs aren't that good. I mean, come on. It's like me saying that French silk pie doesn't have chocolate in it. It's just not true. Well, then that's what our call to action is for this is going to be. I want you guys down below in the comment section to tell me what Garrett Cole doesn't think is the best when we all know it really is. Kind of like how Garrett Cole doesn't think the Beatles are the best rock group in rock and roll history something like that i want you guys to i want the funny ones because i will feature if you guys have enough of them i'll make a video where i kind of feature the best of the best in the comment section but a little bit of house cleaning before we start this podcast if you haven't already go ahead check out our patreon page patreon.com backslash most valuable podcast if you support us each and every week by watching, liking, and subscribing and want to support us just a little bit more, you can go to our Patreon page. we got some cool rewards like, hey, for a dollar, you get an exclusive podcast from the MVP guys each and every month. So go check that out, patreon.com backslash most valuable podcast. And me and Brandon actually have a special announcement for you guys. This podcast is sponsored, man. This is a podcast brought to you by the special company of Shoein and Brandon. Go ahead and let us know a little bit about Shoein.com. Well, folks, we all know that getting to a postseason game has become way too expensive and way too hard. A group of fans had enough and created a way to solve this problem. Shoein gets real fans into real postseason games at face value and months before other people can even get their tickets. So here's how it works. You buy a team-based reservation to a specific game. If your team makes it, you get a ticket at face value. Let's say you're a Notre Dame fan. You can buy a reservation for $20 to the National College Championship game. If they make it, you get to buy a ticket at face value. You pick the section, and you lock in that face value price when you buy. You can trade or sell your reservations all season long. We got a sneak peek at shoewin.com. That's S-H-O-O-Win.com. And this is going to make the season even more fun. We know that Shoewin is going to be able to offer users access to the National College Football Championships, among other things. Shoewin hasn't even launched yet, but MVP listeners get a VIP invite. MVP listeners, visit shoewin.com backslash VIP to sign up and you'll be one of the first people to know about this. There's a ton of buzz about Shoein right now, folks. You want to sign up now while you can get an invitation to join. The worst thing imaginable, your team makes it to the postseason or playoff 
and you are not there. And that special VIP link is actually whether you're listening on SoundCloud or on YouTube to this podcast, it's going to be down below in the description. So go ahead and click on it. Get your early invite to shoewin, S-H-O-O win dot com. And we got a jam-packed show, like I said, Brandon. We're going to be talking some Houston Cougars in this one. Are they going to be a serious college football playoff contender this year? Going to be talking the great, some would even say the GOAT of the NFL during his career. Peyton Manning, will he be taking his talents to college football in some way? And then we're going to wrap the show up talking a little bit of college football playoff sleepers all the way here in the month of May. But our first topic brings us to Houston. And the reason why when we were coming up with the topics for this show, I kind of put this one out there was because last week we talked about the Big 12 and their expansion. And there were stories today that at the end of last week, because we record on Mondays, as you guys know, you're listening to this now, that by the time we had recorded our podcast on Big 12 expansion, there had already been an article out where the Big 12 has been apparently reaching out to Houston, Memphis, and Central Florida were the big three. And the big thing for Houston is not only can they be a college football playoff contender, but if they did make the college football playoff this year, does that make them a lock to get into a Power 5 conference like the Big 12? I think that if... They did that. I, I don't know if it would make them a lock, but it would put them probably right up there in the top two of teams that the Big 12 would be wanting to go after. I, I really I really think so. I think right now they may be one of the definitely top five teams that the Big 12 would want to go after, and why wouldn't they want to do that? I think that right now the Big 12 really needs to, and we talked about it last week, so I don't really want to get too too much mm-hmm. into that topic again, but a, a team like Houston, and really it, it, it all comes down to head coach Tom Herman. That's what it comes down to. It's him. Because without his coaching, without his style, uh, Houston's really not on the board, I don't think. I, I don't think Houston is in play uh, for even being that good of a team. And no one would look at them. But I think it's because of the way that he's made his guys act. You know, how it's 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 really funny. He said that to, to you know, to get them to, to, to buy in and everything – to, they're the Houston Cougars. So many were showing up late, wearing the wrong uniform, missing class, really not caring. And Herman is quoted saying, quote, we decided F it, end quote, and that they, the staff chained the locker room door shut. Oh, that's classic. And they would not let the team in. And Herman said, this is, this is for the Houston Cougars. And none of you are Houston Cougars. I'll see you on the practice field at 445 in the morning. And those of you who make it through this hell week, if you make it through this hell week, then we'll let you use the locker room again. It's that style of coaching that makes a team good because he's not going to take any BS. And it's that style of coaching that the Big 12 should be yearning for. You know, that's a power five. I mean... Maybe some people will say, Brandon, well, you know, that's that's the wrong mindset. Just because he coaches like that doesn't mean that that's a, a power five mindset. But I do think that. I think that that's a power conference mindset. That's the type of stuff a coach does in the Big 12, well, where did, in the SEC. Where did he come out of? He came out of Ohio State. He was under Urban Meyer the year before he even came to the Houston Cougars. And the first thing I think of is whenever I think back to the great coaches and when you're, you're telling me this story about how he chains up the locker room, tells them to get their act together and um, tells them that, okay, practice will be at four thirty. I think of a, I know this is a different sport on the college level, but my mind just went 
right away to Jimmy Valvano, the old basketball coach yeah. for NC State. And it's a story that it I love it because it's one of my favorites, and we get to hear it all the time during Jimmy V weeks. They always play Survive in Advance, and then during March Madness they play it some more where he he had a bunch of great stories. Like the locker room one where he's like he's pacing back and forth. He's like, I'm going to give him the old Vince Lombardi speech. And he's got this speech in his head. He's got this speech in his head. And then when he gets there, he screws up the line. Or when he goes to storm out of the uh, the room and he goes to slam his arm into the door and he can't open the door. He just slams into it like a brick wall. And you see no matter what coaches they are, the great ones usually have stories like that. The great ones have these stories where it's like that was what turned this program around. Another one, Jimmy Valvano, that I'll throw in there that kind of works the same as this one. He's in that surviving advance 30 for 30. The players were talking about, yeah, at, before or after every practice, they'd cut down the nets. They would seriously cut down the nets, like, and they'd be cheering and Jimmy Valvano and the players were like, at first, it's like, it's kind of weird. Like, why are we doing this? Like, this feels weird. But the more they did it, they got into it. And then by the time they were doing it, it was like, okay, we practiced this enough to where it kind of felt right. That kind of a story is what I think of when you talk about chaining up the locker room doors. And I mean, Herman's head coaching career is not anywhere near done. But I look at that and I go, that is a great sign. Another thing that I saw before a game that they played on ESPN was there was a player who said that before Tom Herman even came to the Houston Cougars, coach never hugged him. Coach never did anything like Tom Herman does. When they come out of the locker room or before they go into the locker room before the game, gives them a high five gives him a nice hug because he's not just building that football team. He's building that mentor relationship between him and the player. That's what it's all about. It's not about just being a a good coach and, and making the right calls and stuff like that, but it's about being a good leader. It's about being a good leader and appreciating the guys that you've got on your team. And I, I think that that's one thing that Tom Herman clearly has done. Now, is it going to be difficult for Houston to have an undefeated season this year? Yeah, it's going to be tough. They've got Oklahoma on their schedule, and they've got an ever-improving Louisville team as well. But I think that what you have to look at is what Tom Herman has done there at Houston in just a short time of one year, and that people already have them on the map of, could they be? Could they be a college football team? a non-power five as of now, I mean, that's that's pretty big stuff. That's pretty big stuff. And if I'm head coach Tom Herman, and if I'm his guys, if I'm the players even more so than Herman, I'm going, we've got to go out there. We have, ha- we have to have the best offseason we've had yet. Mm-hmm. We have got to work our asses off for him. Because he's working his ass off for us. Well, and I even look at it, the thing, no game is really a pushover in college football, but I look at their last year's schedule, and you say that, oh, we've got Oklahoma and we've got Louisville on the map. Last year, the Louisville game was close, and that was before the Houston Cougars were the Houston Cougars. That was September 12th, week two of their season where they won 34-31 in a close game at Louisville. But like I said, that was before the Houston Cougars were the Houston Cougars. If it wasn't for that game at UConn where they ended up losing 20-17, to we could even been talking about them being potential college football playoff members last season because they beat number 21 Memphis. They beat the kid Paxton Lynch. They went ahead and beat... Uh, what's his name? Keenan Reynolds out of Navy, the 15th team. And they didn't just beat Navy. 52-31, to 31, they stomped on them. And then they beat number 22, Temple. And I know those ranked teams, you may be looking at them like, hey, 
Ricky, those aren't power five ranked teams. Those teams shouldn't have even been ranked themselves. Oh, that's right. Then they go into the um, Chick-fil-A Bowl, and they only beat number nine Florida State 38-24. to So, yeah, no, no big deal from the Houston Cougars. And this is a Florida State team that only lost two games before that. One, a bad loss to Georgia Tech. The other, a good 10-point loss could have been a win to the number one team, Clemson Tigers. So I look at this Houston Cougar team, and they're well coached. And that's the bottom line. That first game against Oklahoma, that's going to be the game. If they can win that game at a neutral site, we're going to be talking Houston Cougars. If they go undefeated, they're in the playoff. Because they beat a team that was in the playoff last year. And if they win that first game, that'll also show, hey, Big 12, we can compete with you. Just throw that right out the door because that's not an issue anymore. Yeah, I agree with you. And it's always fun uh, to have that one team that you're always looking at, you know, each year. Like, mm-hmm. oh, you know, no one, not not to say no one's talking about them because people clearly are talking about the Houston Cougars, but more on the fact of no one thinks they can do it. No one really thinks that the Houston Cougars are going to be a playoff team or even be close to that this year. I I, I really think so. I mean, we're talking about it. But, Ricky, I mean, you tell me if I'm correct. I don't think that there's anyone sitting out there. Even if they go undefeated, they probably won't. That's that's going, that's even one of those people who sit around the table and make the decision on the committee. They are not talking about the Houston Cougars. I can almost guarantee you that. Am I wrong? No. I'm going to say that they're not thinking about Houston right now because, to me, based off of last year, There is one thing that the committee said, this is what we base playoff teams off of, and that is conference championships. Alabama, they were the conference champion. Clemson, conference champion. Michigan State won the conference championship over the Iowa Hawkeyes, some who believe they used their fake ID to get to the Big Ten title game. And then you also had Oklahoma who outright won the Big 12 championship without even winning a title game, which I think is ridiculous, but that's for a different subject. So at this point, no. I'm going to say Houston. They're not even thinking about Houston at this point because at this point in the year before the season has even started, and this this goes from now until week one games are played, there, if I'm a college football committee person, I'm assuming that four out of the five power conference teams that win their conference championship are going to be better than Houston. And I'm not saying that if you're a Houston fan and, and you're listening and you're immediately thinking, well, Ricky, I'm going to downvote this on YouTube because you just said that Houston's not good enough. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that I feel like the committee would value an Alabama who wins the SEC, would value a Clemson who wins the ACC, would value an Ohio State or a Michigan State that wins the Big Ten or even a Michigan that wins the Big Ten over a Houston Cougar team. The only good thing for Houston, though, the two conferences I left out Usually the Big 12, because they don't have a conference title game, they're usually in the boat of they have a tie for a champion, which could happen again this year. They could have two teams tied at the top. And the Pac-12 usually doesn't have that team that's like, oh, they're in. Unless it's you're getting Marcus Mariota back to play for the Oregon Ducks kind of a year. The Pac-12, to me, doesn't have a championship team. So Houston could work their way in. if they, They'd have to go undefeated. They'd have to go undefeated and win their, con- win their conference. But the only way they're getting in is if the Big 12 has a two-way, at least a two-way tie at the top, and then the Pac-12 winner has more than, I'm going to say two or more losses. That's how Houston gets in. Yeah, you're right. That is that is the only way. They have to go undefeated. Houston, if they have one loss, they're out. 
I mean, they're out. As evidence of what you had just said, where a one-loss Ohio State team Didn't did get not in. get in. So See, but here's that's, the thing. But, but then you're even more so of a reason why you're not going to have, let's say, a one-loss Houston mm-hmm. non-Power 5 team. They're not, they don't have a chance. See, but here's the thing about the one-loss Ohio State team. They didn't get in because they didn't win their conference championship. If I am a coach this year in college football and you're writing your goals up on the uh, the big whiteboard to get your team hyped up for the season, that number one goal, win the conference. Because you can't even think about, after last year, you can't even think about the playoffs unless you win your conference. Plain and simple. Based off of last year, that's how I'm going at it. Win your conference, and then you'll get into the playoff. That's true. That's it. That's how it's going to go. Because last year we were talking about all these things. I think it's because we've been pampered. But, ah, pampered's not the word I'm looking for. We've been, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? We've been trained, I'm going to say. We've been just so used to the way for the since the beginning of time how the committee in basketball does it. They look at a blind resume. They look at RPI and BPI and the key wins and the key losses and who you beat here, who you beat there. They look at a bunch of stuff. That's all I'm going to say. They look at a bunch of stuff, and they kind of talk it out in a room where it looked like the college football playoff, we haven't had that big sample size. So we don't know what they're thinking. One year they did one thing. The next year they said, fuck it, it's conference championships are going to be the key for this season. I mean, if you go back to the 2014 season, Florida State, they were a playoff team. 13-1, and one, won the ACC. Then you also had um, Ohio State. They came in. They won their conference championship. They beat the Wisconsin Badgers. Then you had Oregon who was 13-2, and two. they won their side of the Pac-12. And you also had Alabama, who got in as a two-loss team, and I believe they won the SEC that year. I believe they did beat Missouri for that. So out of two years, you're looking at it going, okay, win your conference championship, and we're going to be playing for a chance to win the um we're we're gonna have that chance to win the national championship. We're just gonna have to see what happens from Houston. They have good coaching, they have good players, they have a lot of energy, and they have a lot of good things going for them in year two under Tom Herman. I'm excited to see what happens, but it is a long shot, I think, for them. But we will see exactly what happens throughout the season, which, you know, anything, absolutely anything can happen. Got one qu- one last question about um, Houston for you. Last year, it was all about the big thing for this team is if they won their con. I believe it was if they won their conference that Tom Herman was going to get a custom-made diamond grill that had... UH in it, what do they do this year if they make the college football playoff? I think they all have to probably get matching tattoos. Every single every every single every single, coach, every, player, every, si- every single one of them. They all have to pick <laughs> the spot and all agree on it, of course, and uh go from there. Just a simple uh CFB twenty sixteen. Yeah. Just just to commemorate that moment on their bodies. Yeah, I think so. Brandon's gonna come up with the design for that uh for that tattoo, you got to get working on that. But you, you sure, got, I will. You you got a while and uh, a lot of games to see if uh, you actually have to come up with a design. 